to um, have us focus on Europe, on this construction of Europe. Europe, for many scholars, the birth of modern Europe comes either at 1492, when the Europeans found our lands here, or um, in 1453, when the Roman Empire fell and it was already crumbling, disintegrating. And in 1453, the Ottoman Empire took Constantinople, which is modern day Istanbul. And so from the East, for the European imagination from the East, there was Islam and it was um, a very, a very frightful, very scary uh, civilization, very powerful, so still very much respected in that way. But on the East, it felt for Europe, for Europe, for Christendom in particular, that uh, the Muslims were coming. And so while that was happening in the East, on the West, a something of a miracle, as I understood, was happening where the Muslims in the Iberian Peninsula were being pushed out. And on January 2nd, 1492, before October 12th, that same year, and on the same Iberian Peninsula, on January 2nd, 1492, Granada, which was the last Muslim stronghold of the Iberian Peninsula, after having a civilization there for centuries, on January 2nd, 1492, uh, the Islamic Iberian Peninsula was no more. And this was Queen Isabella, who financed Columbus's trip over this way and their conversation about his trip because he was actually in Granada waiting for Granada to surrender before he would you know have a conversation with Isabella and they would talk about how they can get Jerusalem next so remember in the geographic imagination of Europe what Jerusalem means right it's the center of the world so after taking Granada Isabella and Columbus's scheme was to take Jerusalem next, but by sailing west, because over in the east were the Ottomans, the Mamluks, uh, Muslims, Islam. So when Columbus reaches these lands, reaches the Caribbean, uh, encounters immediately enslaves and begins a genocidal campaign against the Taino people in 1492, he returns to Portugal with some enslaved Taino people with him. And the Portuguese find out that there are these new territories. Um, they don't necessarily know that it's a new quote unquote world, but the Portuguese want in on these spoils. And so the Portuguese and the other Catholic monarchs of the Iberian Peninsula who become the Spanish, so Isabella and Ferdinand, uh, they start to fight. And so the, the Pope steps in because he does not want them to fight. And eventually, um, very, very quickly, actually in 1493, he start, they start to draw a line. This is a, um, a map of the, of the world. They didn't have it this way before. They didn't, under, they didn't know that all of these territories were here yet in the so-called Americas. In, 1450, in 1493, they start drawing a line. And then again, in 1494, that says that everything east of this line, Portugal can go invade, and everything west of this line, the Spanish can invade, which is why here, where um, is modern day Brazil, that line cut right there. And so in Brazil, we speak, uh, they speak Portuguese, and over on the western side, Spanish is spoken. So it's um, an invasion and a conversion of the world. Notice that um, the languages that we now speak, it, whether it's Portuguese, Spanish, English, or French, some variants of French, help, those were imposed on the peoples here. And our worlds were not respected. Our languages were not respected. We were all forced to convert uh, to Catholicism. And if we did not, then we would be killed. We would get the same treatment that Jews got in Spain if it was suspected that the ones who converted were actually lying. There's an, there was an exhibit of the Inquisition's torture methods when I visited Granada a couple of years ago that reminded me so much of what our peoples have gone through here 
uh, waterboarding, the burning of our books, the burning of the Maya books, for example. There are only four left in existence that we know of. And that had also happened internally to Europe. Um, so a lot of the atrocities that were inflicted on us here, Europe was inflicting internally within already people already in Europe. And even to this day, there's a Europe from below and a Europe from above. There's still people in Europe who understand themselves as indigenous. They don't want to be this homogenized white Western way uh, of being. Uh, they want to keep living their lives. They defend the land. But what happens here is that all of us are now forced to live in one world. Our worlds are not respected. Of course, there's still many worlds in the Americas, like there are in many parts of the world. We've been fighting to keep them alive, and we're still fighting 500 years later. This logic of...